Okay, how you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use drum machine style recording in Reaper. So I have a new project in front of us. Let's start by making a new track. And we're going to put a drum instrument on this track. I'm going to use Reason right here, using Rewire. It has some good drum sounds to it. And I already chose a kit, so let's see what we have. We have a kick drum, a snare, a ghost snare for doing ghost notes, a clap, a few hi-hats, closed and open, and then a go-go bell. So we're going to trigger this from this track, but we want to record it using drum machine style recording which means we can record in several passes without stopping in between. And also, we want to quantize on the way in, which is what you typically do with a drum machine. So let's set up our track. We want to set our input for our keyboard right here. This is my keyboard. Then we're going to go into record and make sure it's showing input, which it is. We can see it on the meter here and also on this little utility here called MIDI keys. This way you can see when I'm playing my keyboard. Now we're not hearing any sounds yet, and that's because right over here, if we right click, we want to turn on monitor input. This way we actually hear the sounds we're playing. Now it's working. Now for recording the input, we want to quantize it. Right down here, Track recording settings. This is where we can turn on input quantize. Now we don't have to do this step. We can quantize later, but for doing drum machine style recording, this is typically how you do it, as it saves time as we're quantizing on the way in. So we'll choose it here. We'll choose our quantize value. I prefer 16th notes, but you can choose whatever works for you based on your drum part. So that's all we have to do in this window. Let's close it. Now we want to set up our section that we're going to loop. Because with drum machines, you tend to loop sections and define the bars that you want to loop. So for this beat, we're going to define two bars by selecting from here to here and making a time selection from bar one to bar three. That's two bars long. So now we want to turn on looping down over here. This way it's going to loop as it plays or records. Now the recording mode isn't that important. The defaults are fine. Record mode, normal. A new recording is going to split and create new takes. Now we really don't want this, but it's not going to matter yet. And you'll see why in a bit. So if I go into record and start recording my beat, I'll show you the problem with doing it this way. Go into record. Well, the first problem is we need a click track. So let's go over here and turn it on. So now we have a metronome to keep time. Now let's record our beat. Now if you notice, as it keeps playing, we don't hear our beat back. Typically, when using a drum machine, it loops and we can hear back what we just recorded. Take one is empty and take two is our B. Let's hear it. It's nice and quantized, but it didn't play back the way we wanted it to, like a drum machine. Now we could go to our take and crop to active take, but there's a much better way. Let's delete this. And instead, we'll go right here. This chooses what we record. By default, it's set to record input, but we can go over here to MIDI overdub and choose to record and MIDI overdub. If we choose this, it's not going to go into record until we start playing, and it's not going to erase anything or add new playlists. It's going to play over and over again, adding new MIDI data as we play it. So now let's play our beat.
That's much better. It's automatically quantized, and it plays back after we record the notes. And it's waiting to record even more, which is great when we want to record one drum at a time. So let's do that. Let's start with the kick, and then add the snare. We'll delete this. Now we can add the snare. We can add a hi-hat. And each time it goes around, we can add more parts to it, which is typically how you use a drum machine. Now if you want to change a part or delete a part, we can just double click it, and we can erase notes by holding that option on the Mac or Alt on the PC and just delete them like this. Or we could do them by note. So C2 is our kick. We could right click it, it selects it, and just hit delete. We lose our kick part. So we can create a new one. Let's erase the hi hat up here and the open hi hat. And let's add some ghost notes instead. So here's our beat. Let's add some ghost note snares. Go into record. Now let's add some claps, just on the fours. Maybe the bell. Now let's say we're not sure about the bell, but we want to keep the part. We can go in and mute it, just based on that note, right here. Right click it, right click over here, and mute the notes. So now the part is still there, we're just not going to hear it. So let's add a hi-hat part to this. And now we can hear the bell part on top of it by going back in, selecting it, by right clicking, and unmute it. So now all the parts are back in. Now, another thing you might want to do is adjust the velocity of each part. Maybe the kick isn't hitting hard enough. We could change that by selecting the note. Here's the kick. Go right here and adjust the velocity. All the way down or all the way up. So now the kick drum is full velocity. With a snare. Just bring it all the way up and it's full velocity which again is typical of how you program a drum machine. Pretty cool. And when we're done with this part, at least this section, we can copy it to the next section and adjust it. So we can go out here, move it over to this spot, select this instead, and we can adjust it. Maybe change the kick part or the snare part. And we still have the old one right here. So we can work in sections and build verses and choruses and build our drum part section by section. So anyway, that's how we can do drum machine style recording in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time.
Thanks.